summer and people are swimming in the season's fashions. I am in hot, hot, hot Seattle today with record temperatures and no air conditioning. And I'm Wendy Kendall, author of the fashionable cozy mystery titled Cat Out of the Bag. That's cat with a K, where Katherine Watson is a purse designer and amateur sleuth from designer bags to body bags. And the prequel, an intriguing novella titled Pistachio Makes a Splash. Expected to be available in November is my new romance, Entangled in Mystery, titled Snow Kiss Cookies to Die For. Katherine Watson is a part of that story also, but the focus is on first grade teacher Desiree Tucker and the threats she faces in the midst of her newfound romance. Find out more about me and my books at wendywritesbooks.com. But today, I'm delighted to be joined by Susie Black. Born in the Big Apple, Susie Black is an author who calls sunny California, Southern California home. Like the protagonist in her Holly Swimsuit mystery series, Susie is a successful apparel sales executive. Susie began telling stories as soon as she learned to talk. Now she's telling stories from her garment industry experience in humorous mysteries. The first in her Holly swimsuit mysteries is Death by Sample Size. Find her on her Facebook author page at the Holly Swimsuit Mystery Series dot author. So excited to dive in and hear all about her fashion business and her fashionable mystery. Welcome to Wendy Kendall in Pursuit of Fashion with Susie Black. Hello, Susie. Congratulations Hello, on your Wendy. new book. I hope you don't melt. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I have been worried about all my friends up in the Northwest. Well, we're hanging in here. It's good. It's, it's gonna break at some point. We're just Absolutely. Not <laughs> well, here we are in the midst of the summer season, and people are enjoying the beaches and pools in their swimsuits. Tell us about what it's like working in the industry that brings us those fashions. Well, it's a very fast-paced industry. Um, it is go, 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 go. Um, in the uh, swimmer industry, it's one season a year. So we have a little bit more time to develop the product. Uh, we do a lot of uh, product research out of Europe, but more important, out of South America. We get a lot of really interesting fabrications, color stories, and prints. And uh, if you're in the dress business or the sportswear business, you are gonna be doing four seasons a year. And sometimes the designer has to work, let's say fall and holiday lines almost concurrent or she'd never get the product out. So in swimwear, we have a little bit more time. It's, I would say six to eight months to develop the product, but it's uh, one and done. If you've messed up, it's not so good. <laughs> oh, I didn't even think about that. That's true. Would you tell us what made you decide to get involved in fashion and specifically with swimsuits? Well, uh, life never turns out the way you think it will. And um, I had envisioned myself in a career in journalism, but life had a different plan for me. Um, my family had an emergency and my dad was a apparel sales rep and he was at a trade show and um, his mother became very ill and he couldn't get any of the people that work, that he worked for to help him out. So he called me up, I was visiting my family in Miami and he said, Hal, I need your help. And I'm looking around to see, you can't be talking to me because I, I don't go to your showroom. I, I, I wanna be a writer. But it was my dad, he needed help. My mother and I flew to Atlanta. He gave me 45 minutes of how to be a salesman and left for three days. And when he came back, miraculously, I hadn't destroyed his business. I had actually written a lot of orders. 
and I had just finished college and I was not quite sure if I wanted to go to grad school. And my dad offered me a job and I said, well, what the heck? I was intrigued. And as my Nana always said, if you don't like it, you'll stop. College isn't going away. The school will still be there if you want to go back to it. So I, I went to work for my dad and I was a traveling sales lady in the deep Southern states. There were no women who did what I did. I was either famous or infamous. <laughs> I don't know which, but I would walk into the store and they would say things like, what kind of daddy you have girl will let you do a job like that. And I would always say, well, I guess one that wants to get rich because I'm very good at what I do. And uh, that's how I got started. And I worked for my dad for four years and we got into the swimwear business uh, because the store recommended us. And uh, it was interesting uh, because years later, the owner of the company made me vice president of sales. And then my dad was working for me. Oh my goodness. That's you know, I fed my mother. So I would say it was a job security. You know, what do you think? But, uh, <laughs> but it was interesting because we, I came to find out that originally this man did not want to hire us because of me. He thought that I would uh, not want to hang in there being a road rep, get married and leave. But I fooled them all. There were a lot of naysayers. There were a lot of people who did not think that a woman could do this. And uh, I broke a lot of glass ceilings, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, you were thinking, do they think you're famous or infamous? It sounds like you became legendary. That's awesome. You know, at the time, um, I was a legend uh, only because I was it. Uh, I had other women uh, come up to me and say, you're Holly, right? And I'm like, do we know each other? Well, no, but I, I've heard that if you want to be a sales rep and you're a woman in this area, you're the one to talk to. So I was very fortunate that I had a mentor in my dad who taught me absolutely everything about how to not only be a good salesperson and a good business person, but how to be a good human being, because I think that the two are linked together. You sell yourself. It's the product is the product, but I sell confidence. I sell my ability to put my customers into the right thing at the right time. And that's what they buy. Fantastic. And well, we're going to talk about your book too a little bit later, but this all shines through in your writing too for your series. So it's fantastic. I love that. So, but let me ask you for fashion buyers, you have some swimsuit fitting hints. Would you share some of your tips? Absolutely. Um, swimwear, if it is nothing else, it is the art of illusion. Uh, we are magicians because you, if you know what to wear, you can conceal something that you are not so happy about. You can show off something that you're proud of. And it all is a matter of knowing what style to try on. And there are lots of body types, but there are four major ones. There is the apple, there is the hourglass, there is the pear, and there is the straight. Uh, essentially, it is a difference of whether your bust is bigger than your hips and your uh, waist. So in the apple, your, your waist is uh, wider and your bust and your hips are smaller. In the hourglass, you have a small waist and bigger bust and bigger hips. And the pair, my least favorite, is where your hips are wider than your waist and your bust. And if you're one of the very few people out there that have the perfect figure, you're more of a straight <laughs> up and down. But once you know your body type, it's also helpful to know your measurements, your bust, your waist, your hips. And once you know that, 
you can go into a store and you can look at something, but my biggest overall suggestion to anybody without going into every single fit defect you could possibly have is swimwear has now for the last 10, 20 years, about 20 years, come up with a wonderful thing called separates. If you take yourself into the separates department in any swimwear store, you, if your boobs are bigger than your tush, you can still find a suit because you can mix and match. You can find a top that, uh, for example, if you are very big busted, you want something with a lot of support. If you're small busted, you don't want something that's gonna flatten you out even more. Um, and there are lots of, of silhouettes that are wonderful to conceal. A swim dress, for example, if you have a big tush. If uh, you feel like your boobs are too big, well, get a tankini because it looks like a one piece, but it's really a two piece. So there are lots of things that you can do, but you have to start out knowing what you are. Once you have that information, you're home free. Knowledge is power. <laughs> it is. Knowledge is power. In fact, so many of my stores uh, have talked about fit is the major concern of their customers that um, I put together a fit book. And um, yes, so it, helpful. It literally starts at the top of your shoulders, if you have big shoulders, and it goes all the way down to whether you're short or you're tall. And I, in, in this fit book, what I have done is for every single uh, issue that a woman might have, I have suggested the type of suit she should go and look at. And I put little pictures in and um, of course, I made my comments, you know, uh, you have to, because you have to make it fun, otherwise nobody would read it. But if, if any of uh, the folks that are, are listening to this would like to have it, I would be happy to send it to them for free. No charge. They can, um, you, they can just email me or, or email you, and I will be happy to make sure that they get a copy of the Fit book. Fantastic. Okay, where do they contact you to get this? Because boy, you all are going to want to get this. <laughs> well, my email address is kind of a odd one, but I'll give it to you. It's mysteries, M Y S T E R I E S underscore at author com. And if that's too long, they can contact me at my um, Facebook page that you gave them. Oh, good. Yes. Yes. And we'll give it again at the end, too. Right. How far in advance do the designers begin working on the summer line for a specific year? And also, how do you decide and choose on which lines you'd carry? Well, let me answer number two first because it's sort of like putting a peanut butter and jelly sandwich together, all right? Everything has to go together. You have to, swimwear is like, being a salesman is the same thing as being an author. There's no different, you tell a story. A story has four elements, a beginning, a middle, an end, and most important, a point of view. Am I not right? When we write our stories, is that not the things that we concern ourselves with? It is no Absolutely. different in showing a product line. So what I learned at a, when I worked for my dad is that everything that you bring into a store, you have to have an expectation that you're going to sell it. Now, what does that? You have to do your homework. What I do before I go into any store, especially when I've never sold, is I go into their swimwear department and I literally mentally take it apart because if they've already got something, they don't need it from me. So my job is to put together products that they don't have and then convince them that they need it and then convince them that I'm the one that has to sell it to them. So that's question number two. In terms of question number one, if you're in the 
the ready to wear business or you're in the sportswear business, you have a lot less time to put your product together. If you're in the sportswear business, I would say that our designers work six to eight months in advance of when the product is going to be presented. So there is a lot of traveling to uh, Europe. There's a lot of traveling, as I said, to South America. Um, having been to Rio a couple of times, let me tell you, the, the uh, Copacabana is very nice. The rest of it, oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of dangerous, to be honest with you. Oh, but, really? Um, yeah, but uh, there are other places like Uruguay uh, that uh, are very, very European. And the styles that you see are remarkable. The other thing that our designers do, try not to laugh, they go to Miami and they go to the highlight games. Why? Because the women who go there are the most fashion forward women and they dress to the nines. They have come back from Paris and they are wearing their stuff and they are wearing things that you're going to see in the stores, maybe homogenized for American taste a little bit next season. It's amazing what you can learn if you just keep your head on a swivel and know what to look for. You learn everything, but you're right, Wendy. Knowledge is power. Fascinating. Okay, now I wanted to know, do the materials used in the suits, does the material make a difference? Like, should you look for something different for the beach versus the pool? And also, does the region you wear it in make any difference? I'm sorry, say the last part again. The region that you wear it in. Like, um, if you're in the Southwest, would you wear something different than me up in the Pacific Northwest? Well, I, I think it is a... Uh, an issue of social mores. I'll, I'll tell you that when I first got into swimwear and I was a rep in the deep south, my dad had no trouble selling string bikinis. I couldn't give them away in Alabama. So I, I think that uh, it is more of a the social mores than it, it, it's 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 your taste level. Uh, in terms of fabrication, uh, stretch fabrics are absolutely the heart and soul of swimwear. There are some natural fabrics like cotton, but it doesn't stretch four ways the way Trico does. So when you put a swimsuit on, if you go into the store and it says Lycra, you know it's going to move with you. But uh, I, I would say that the lion's share of most swimwear is in some kind of stretch fabric. Because if you do it in something that has not as much stretch, you can't have a one piece suit. You can only do it in two piece suits. Yes, yes. that makes total sense. Getting too sense. technical here? No, that makes total sense. Okay, because yes. I, I have a tendency to like explain maybe more than I need to. So you'll stop me if I do. I think you say it in a way that's understandable for people that are outside of the industry. So it, yes, that makes total sense. Good. Yeah. Have you ever been behind the scenes at a fashion show? What is that like? Organized chaos. <laughs> okay, I'll set the scene. If yes. you look at a runway fashion show, it is a continuous cycle of models coming out, showing the, the product that they're wearing and going back. And they can't run back, but I can assure you when they get behind that curtain, they are in fourth gear. They are ripping their clothes off because they have about 45 seconds, not minutes, seconds to change into the next item. And part of the reason somebody like me was back there is to make sure that the bras aren't being put on inside out, upside down. You'd be amazed because you're talking, if there are six girls out on the runway, there are six girls in a dressing room throwing stuff around, bras are over in one corner, the pants are over on the other, the, the cover-ups are up on the, on, the, on the ceiling. And it's, when I tell you organized chaos, I am not making it up. Uh, I have seen models where I have had to pull them back because the bra was upside down. Now how they didn't notice that is beyond me, but okay, they were in a hurry, but 
literally taking it off and there is no pride because they're running out there and all the stagehands who are men are standing there and they don't care because the idea is do it right, do it fast, get it out there. So yes, I have been back there and it's not pretty. 45 seconds. I 45 can't even seconds. imagine that. Yeah, that is the average time. And that is a gift. Some of them are, and I've, I've been with the modeling agencies where they've told their girls, you got 30 seconds and don't think that we're kidding. Oh my God. So uh, it's, it's kind of like being a fireman, really. Yes. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Do you have any advice for people who are interested in getting into the swimsuit industry? Yes. Be prepared to work your tush off. Wow. Yeah. It, it sounds is, like it. Swimwear is, it's fun. I mean, really, other than drowning or getting a really bad suntan, you know, a sunburn, who has a bad time in a swimsuit? Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a business and it is a very focused business. As I said before, you got one chance, you know, you come out with one line a year. Sometimes uh, some of the Missy, you know, the more mature lines come out with a, uh, a cruise line, but it's, it's very small. You, spring is the main event. So my advice is before somebody goes into swimwear, go into the stores and make sure that you have a product that somebody wants and somebody needs and put your lines together if you're going to be a rep that has more than one product line and make sure that they go together, get a cover-up line to go with it. Um, when you walk into a store, if it's especially if it's a swimwear store, have a junior line and a missy line and price points count. Be really aware of the market that you are going to sell to. If you walk in with a suit that's going to retail at $169 and everybody else on the floor is at 90, you're not going to sell a lot of suits. So it, it, you do your homework is what I would advise, but it is a delightful industry. You're a very nice people. We help each other. And uh, it's, it's uh, similar to uh, how it is with us authors. Uh, authors help each other. And it's the same in, in swim, but I would say, know your customer, just like we have to know our audience. It's no different. It's great advice. That is great advice. Susie, tell us about your exciting new mystery book, Death by Sample Size. It's so good. Tell us about the plot and tell us about your sleuth. Well, uh, the plot, is uh, an interesting one. Um, the protagonist is Holly Schlipnick, and like me, she is a swimwear sales executive. And she is with a company called Dizzy, D I T Z Y, Dizzy Swimwear. It's a junior <laughs> line in Los Angeles. And the plot is that. Holly gets into the elevator in the mart and discovers that Bunny Frank, a big shot in the industry who is not very well liked, is dead as a doornail. And she is trussed up like a Thanksgiving turkey, ready for the oven. She's wrapped up in shipping tape and she has a bikini stuffed down her throat. And wouldn't you know it, one of Holly's close colleagues is wrongly accused of the crime. So Holly puts on her sleuthing cap and tries to find the real killer. And Holly is not a professional with this and nothing goes the way she thinks it's going to. And she gets herself into a lot of trouble. She gets herself out of it, but she comes very, very close to being another victim. That, it's this, it's such a fun story. It's, um, mm -hmm. yes. And trying to solve it before the ending. I love doing that. I love trying to do that. But, oh boy, there's some twists in this. <laughs> you know, one, one thing that I am very proud of 
and said, I have taken a, a very unscientific survey and I have asked everybody who read the, read the book, did you figure out who done it? So far, no one did. I know. It, it just does not get better than that. You know, I, I, I think that if you keep turning that page, trying to figure out who the heck did it, but um, that was very rewarding for me. But uh, the story has a lot of humor in it. Yes. Uh, and uh, the story is written in the first person, which is not so easy to do because if, if the protagonist is not in the room, she really doesn't know what's going on. So I had to create a posse. And what I did was I created the Yentas. And the Yentas are four women who are contemporaries and, and actually competitors of Holly. And they meet for coffee every day. And they uh, chat and they snipe and they help her solve the crime. It is, it's a great read you're all going to want to pick it up. Definitely. Um, is there something about the creative process of writing and marketing a book that's similar to the creativity and marketing involved in the swimsuit fashion industry? Or are there some skills maybe that you use in both? Well, I, I think that the writing and marketing of a book is you have, a, I think that the relationship between the writer and the reader is a lot more intimate. You are really speaking to a specific audience. I'm not, you and I don't speak to science fiction readers. We speak to cozy mystery readers. So it, it is a lot more of a intimate relationship because you know who you're, reader is and you have an idea of what the expectation is. Um, there, it's a little bit different in, in the swim business because really once you show the line, the buyer gives you an order, you ship the order, you're done. Uh, the salesman uh, on my side is not the one marketing the product. That's up to the retailer. And our lane in being an author, the lion's share of the responsibility of marketing really falls much more on the author than anybody else. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> that is so I don't know about you, true. Wendy, but it's not my favorite part of the, <laughs> part of the, part of the experience. Well, I love writing the stories, but, yes. um, but I do love, and I know you do as well. I love the connection with the readers and, yes. um, and, you know, seeing their reviews and meeting them at signings and appearances and conferences is just so rewarding. It's just so much fun to meet them and, and talk about your mysteries and your mutual love of mysteries. So, well, there is nothing better than a reader saying, I couldn't put your book down. I was up all night reading it. I had to know how it ended. It just <laughs> does not get any better than that. That's true. And yours is definitely a page turner. That's for sure. Well, thank now, you. Oh, for sure. Now, my uh, protagonist, Catherine Watson, she started out in Southern California in, on Rodeo Drive. That's her corporate headquarters. She ends up um, moving to Bayside, Washington, but her, her headquarters is still in Southern California and she loves it there. You're in Southern California. What, what's something that's your favorite thing about Southern California? You know, there are two things. Um, the normally more temperate weather, <laughs> <laughs> I say normally because this is not normal, but well, I, I, right now I'm in the desert and it is, it's pretty toasty, but uh, we have seven months of heaven and five months of, oh my God, what were we thinking? Um, <laughs> but uh, the temperate weather is certainly 
one, but I think that for me, the thing that I love the most is the way that the Hispanic culture has been woven into literally every part of our culture here, from the architecture to the food, to everyday phrases, to the names of the streets. It is as big a part of my life as my family. And I think that having a different culture so deeply embedded into this culture, it has really given a lot of people an opportunity to be more open-minded, to not just think that theirs is the only voice worth listening to, theirs is not the only thoughts worth considering, that there are other ways to think of things. I think it has given people more of an open mind. Uh, the Hispanic culture here is, it's, it's as part of everybody's life as it is breathing in and out, and I love it. Yes, I remember that from, I'm also a, like Catherine Watson, I'm a transplant. I started out in Los Angeles and I kept moving north, San Francisco, Salem, Oregon, now Seattle. <laughs> running out of, you'll be in Canada if you keep going. <laughs> no, I, I have put an artificial barrier. I'm not going any further <laughs> north. <laughs> oh, another fashion question. What footwear do you recommend to go best with swimsuits? I would say a low heeled sandal with some support and a strap. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Low heel. Thank you. I love that advice. <laughs> Well, you'd be amazed, Wendy. Uh, you go to the beach, you see women in heels, and I'm like, really? Yes, I Who know. Does that? <laughs> yes, I agree. Okay, since my protagonist is a purse designer, I have to ask, what fashion advice for with your swimwear for your purse or carrying, what would you carry? What's your advice? Regrettably, not what Catherine designs. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that if it were me, I would get a brightly colored, maybe a printed mesh bag. Um, it should have uh, some pockets on the inside to put your keys in your hotel room card key. Um, maybe a couple of bucks that you want to, you know, you want to go buy a, a soda. Uh, it should have enough room for your towel. And um, if you have a bathing cap or something like that, and of course, a book. <laughs> yes, oh, good, yes. You know, uh, your sunglasses, you know, all the things that you would take to the beach with you. Uh, uh, the other thing I would recommend in, in a beach bag is a really good two things, an enclosure, either a zipper on the top or a really good drawstring so you don't lose anything. And the other thing is a good lengthwise and widthwise strap. So you can wear it over your shoulder because if you're carrying other stuff, that way you don't have to be holding your, your bag in your hand. But a mesh bag, and, and they have some really cute ones with some Hawaiian floral prints on them. They're, they're adorable. But bright colors uh, are, are, are what I would recommend. You can find it on the beach very quickly. Love that. Love that. This has been so much fun. Susie Black, author. Go and get her book. It's so good. Death by Sample Size. I mean, can you get enough of that title? <laughs> <laughs> See if you can solve it. Because I, I before the ending, I... I have to admit, I'm a mystery author, and she had me stumped, but I loved every minute of it. Well, yes. thank you. Thank you. And, and tell us, tell the listeners again, how can they reach you? You're on Facebook. You have an author page on Facebook. I do. And I can't think of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I it now. You have it. I know, but I have to go back to it. Oh, I'm okay. so sorry. It's no, our listeners, our listeners will be happy to do that. So to wait. So I'm so sorry. At the Holly Swimsuit Mystery Series dot author on Facebook. 
Right. And yes, you won't be sorry to get this. I am book. so sorry. I just senior moment. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Thank you for all your insights into the swimwear fashion industry. And wow, you know, you're gonna you're gonna read all about it too in her mystery book. There, um, you're. It's a fictional book, but you're getting a lot of insights. So. Well, Wendy, thank you. This has been, I, I, as I had told you before, I was looking forward to this in a big way. I, I love the idea that we were able to talk about what I do in my career and how it really has driven my writing career. So thank yes. you. This has been wonderful. I, I cannot thank you enough for giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. And, and my book to all of your many, many followers. Well, thank you very much. And I'm, I know our listeners have gained a lot of insights about swimwear. And don't forget to get with, um, get that fit guide because there's, uh, it's very helpful. I will tell you, uh, it's very helpful. All right, thank you so much. Thank you and stay cool or try to stay cool. Yes.